Hello and welcome to this Soap and Brain Hub video on internal capsule stroke. To begin, we're going to have a look at the brain through a coronal section. This will allow us to visualize the internal capsule, the structures surrounding it, and the arterial vasculature that supplies this particular area of the cortex. The internal capsule is a white matter tract structure that contains nerve fiber bundles passing through it. The main structures surrounding the internal capsule are the basal ganglia. This is a group of gray matter nuclei, sometimes referred to as the basal nuclei, that have various connections with the midbrain and the diencephalon. Their main function is related to motor output. The basal ganglia include the caudate nucleus, located superiorly on this image, the globus pallidus, located most medial from the lateral sulcus, and the putamen. The globus pallidus and putamen are often grouped together and referred to as the lentiform nucleus. Now, let's have a look at the arterial vasculature associated with the internal capsule. Let's begin with the internal carotid artery. This is a branch of the common carotid as it bifurcates to form the internal carotid and the external carotid artery. The internal carotid artery divides into the anterior cerebral artery and the middle cerebral artery in the middle cranial fossa. The middle cerebral artery has branches supplying, supplying the frontal, parietal, and temporal lobes. The middle cerebral artery can be split into four main sections. M1 is the horizontal section, which reaches from the internal carotid artery to the lateral fissure. M2 is the insular portion of the MCA. M3 reaches from the top of the lateral fissure to the cerebral cortex. And finally, M4 is completely cortical, supplying the surface of the cerebral cortex. The lenticulostriate arteries branch off from the M1 segment of the MCA. These arteries are small branches ascending to supply the internal capsule, reticular formation, and the striatum. Therefore, these arteries in particular are the ones we'll be considering when discussing internal capsule stroke. We are now going to zoom in on the internal capsule to get a better understanding of its structure and function. As I mentioned before, it is a white matter tract located between the globus pallidus and putamen on one side and the caudate nucleus and thalamus on the other. The internal capsule has an angular, almost pyramidal shape that lets us divide it into three main parts. These are the posterior limb, the genu, and the anterior limb. Each specific part of the internal capsule contains particular nerve fibers. The white matter tracts that project through the internal capsule originate from the cortex, and this fan of fibers is called the corona radiata. These fibers carry motor information and can be related to specific parts of the body based on their origin on the cortex as represented by the motor homunculus. The anterior limb of the internal capsule receives fibers from the prefrontal cortex. These are mainly anterior thalamic radiation fibers. The genu contains corticonuclear tracts and geniculate fibers originating from the motor cortex. It also contains the corticobulbar tract, which carries upper motor neuron fibers from the motor cortex to cranial nerve nuclei, which control the muscles of the head and face. The posterior limb contains corticospinal tract fibers. The sublenticular component of the internal capsule receives auditory functions, while the ventrolenticular portion has visual functions. In order to talk about internal capsule stroke specifically, first, I just want to have a few words about stroke in general. A stroke is a medical clinical term for the onset of neurological symptoms or signs that lasts for over 24 hours and are due to a vascular cause. Strokes can be divided into two main types, ischemic strokes and hemorrhagic strokes. In an ischemic stroke, blood supply to an area of the brain is occluded due to a thromboembolism or an in situ thrombosis of a cerebral vessel. In hemorrhagic stroke, there is bleeding into the brain tissue. This can often be caused by the rupture of an aneurysm. 
Either way, the neurological symptoms will depend on the area of the brain that has been affected and damaged through ischemia. Now, let's have a look at some clinical features of internal capsule stroke and their correlations with the neuroanatomy. Some features include lower face weakness, spastic hemiplegia of the upper limb, and spastic hemiplegia of the lower limb. Spastic hemiplegia refers to constant contractions of the muscles affected, and this often leads and presents in paralysis. An important clinical sign of an internal capsule stroke is called the positive Babinski sign. This is a sign related to the palmar plantar reflex. In a healthy individual, a normal plantar response to nociceptive stimuli is downward flexion of the hallux, which is a medical term for your toes. A pathological response would be upward extension of the hallux, and this is called a positive Babinski sign. This is an indicator of an upper motor neuron lesion, and in particular, it relates to damage to the corticospinal tract. In the normal reflex pathway, the stimulus is received on the S1 dermatome and travels up the tibial, tibial nerve to synapse in the anterior horn of the spinal cord, which results in efferent fibers traveling down the tibial nerve to elicit the appropriate motor response. However, if there is damage to the normal descending control of the plantar reflex, the suppression or, or of extension withdrawal through the deep perineal nerve is lost, and the toes instead extend upwards. Another important sign of an internal capsule stroke is lower face weakness. This is due to an upper motor neuron lesion to the facial nerve, which is cranial nerve 7. The nucleus of cranial nerve 7, the facial nucleus, is located in the pons. It is divided into an upper division and a lower division. The upper division of the facial nucleus is innervated by both cerebral hemispheres, while the lower division of the facial nucleus is innervated solely by the contralateral single hemisphere. Therefore, for example, if there's an infarct affecting the left cerebral hemisphere, as demonstrated in this image, and consequently the left internal capsule, innervation to the facial nucleus from the left side will be interrupted. This will result in no supranuclear innervation of the lower facial nucleus and subsequent contralateral lower facial weakness. The upper facial nucleus, however, will still receive a supranuclear innervation from the right hemisphere, resulting in preserved upper facial strength. I hope that this has been a clear explanation of internal capsule stroke and that it's helped you understand the neuroanatomy that leads to clinical signs and symptoms. See you soon! Subscribe to Soton Brain Hub for more videos to help explain the mysteries of the brain.